Have you given up on your New Year's resolution to exercise? Dr. Narada McKibben has an encouraging segment to share on today's episode of Wake Up With Hope. Ronnie Mills is also back to share his exciting news while Pastor Mark Finley joins us to share a morning devotional and the children's choir is back with more music. Stay with us. Happy Friday morning, friends, and welcome to Wake Up With Hope. It's a lovely and wintry Friday morning here in Maryland, friends. What's the weather like where you are? Talk to us about it on our Wake Up With Hope Facebook page and connect with other viewers as well. And no matter what the weather looks like outside your window, God promises to fill you with His cheery promises of hope. You can always count on God's love, even in the midst of life's most difficult moments. That's right. And what a blessing it is to be able to have such a loving God. And friend, we want you to share God's love with others as we share His love with you today. And so let's begin by taking a look back at what took place on this day in history. On February 24, 1836, in San Antonio, Texas, Colonel William Travis issued a call for help on behalf of the Texan troops defending the Alamo, an old Spanish mission and fortress under siege by the Mexican army. The day before, a large Mexican force commanded by General Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana had arrived suddenly in San Antonio. Travis and his troops took shelter in the Alamo, determined not to give up though heavily outnumbered. Though this battle was lost, the defense of the Alamo became iconic in the war, and a couple of months later, at the crucial Battle of San Jacinto, Texas soldiers commanded by Sam Houston defeated Santa Ana's army of 1,250 men, spurred on by cries of, Remember the Alamo! Wow, I mean, what an intense battle, friends. You know, it reminds me of another seemingly lost battle that actually ends in victory. As Jesus died on the cross, his enemies saw him as a defeated foe, when in reality, the greatest victory in the world had been accomplished. In his life on earth, Jesus showed that Satan had no power over him. He had battled Satan and won. And today, friends, you and I can face temptations and trials, and we can say, remember the Savior. We too can have the victory as we take a hold of the Savior. Amen. It's now time for music here on Wake Up With Hope. And as the children's choir brings us a gospel medley, may your heart be blessed.
Don't forget if you're enjoying today's show, share it with a friend or visit our website at hopetv.org slash wake up to see more. And check out our YouTube channel. Simply search for Wake Up With Hope and subscribe to keep up with each one of our episodes. When we return, Ronnie Mills will join us to share some exciting Hope Channel news. But first, we have Doctor's Orders up next. Honey, I still don't feel well. I don't think I'm getting any better. Oh, really? Are you exercising like your doctor recommended? Well, yeah. You know, the batteries went out on my remote the other day, and I had to change the TV manually all night long. That's not exercise. But your heart rate hardly went up. Oh, well, you know those dramas I watch on television? Mm-hmm. Well, in the exciting part, my heart races. That must be exercise. Hardly. Your doctor said you need 150 minutes a week of aerobic activity. Well, what's aerobic mean? That means exercise or activity that puts your heart rate up. Depends on your age, but for you, you should be aiming for about 130. Well, my heart races when I go up about four steps. Of course, I have to stop and rest and get my breath after that. Is that exercise? Well, how long does your heart rate stay up there? Oh, for about 10 seconds at least. 10 seconds? You need to maintain it for 10 minutes each time. 10 minutes? Wow! Well, maybe that's why I'm not getting better, because I'm not trying hard enough. Well, that would be an understatement. Pathetic efforts, pathetic results. Our happiness depends on our health, so give your health the best. Doctor's orders. Welcome back, friends. Ronnie Mills joins us now to share Hope Channel updates with us. Good morning, Saints, and happy Friday. The popularity of search engines such as Google and Yahoo are illustrative of mankind's endless quest for answers to questions. These questions can range from the secular to the sacred. Due to the support of viewers like you, Hope Channel has been proud to produce a show that enables people to send in their spiritual questions. Therefore, I'm thrilled to have as my guest this morning, Ruben Cavarubias, the co-host of Bible Help Desk on his beautiful new set of Bible Help Desk. Ruben, welcome to Wake Up With Hope. Well, thank you for having me here, Ronnie. Ruben, for anyone who's never seen Bible Help Desk, what happens on the show? Well, it's very exciting because what we do is we take the Bible, we dive into the Bible to answer questions, everyday questions that people may have, or biblical questions. And so they submit them, we go into the Bible and answer those questions. Wow, so it's the ultimate search engine for the Bible. Absolutely. What are some of the new developments that people can look forward to in 2023? Well, we have some new hosts potentially coming in. We're interviewing for some new co-hosts to join me here so that we can dive into the Word. So that's one of the things that we are excited about, to have someone new here at the desk as we interview and, and learn more about our guests. And how can our audience submit questions to Bible Help Desk? Well, we try to make it as easy as possible for them to submit questions. They can go on the website of Hope TV and submit questions there. They can go on our Instagram and our Facebook Facebook and submit questions. They can even mail us questions uh, and then we can get those on the show. Amen. So you take care of everyone. Absolutely. There's no excuse not to send in a question. How is your incredible panelist chosen? So we have a great producer that goes through many suggestions of panelists and we go through uh, big universities and pastors from all around the United States. So we have scholars, we have pastors that come on the show and help us dive into the Bible. Amen. Ruben, out of the tons of questions you received over the years, what's been the one that really stands out in your mind? Well, there's a lot that actually stand out, and I'm just going to go with one recently that came up on an episode, and it had to do with pets. We had someone submit a question asking about their pet. Uh, will they be able to see them in heaven? And it just so happened that we had an expert on the panel that uh, were on pets and in the Bible. Uh, and so diving into that and seeing how just animals were part of God's plan as well just opened my eyes into how loving God is, not only when it comes to us, but those animals that we love as well. What day of the week is your show aired on Hope Channel? It airs on Wednesday night at 8.30 p.m. Amen. 8.30 on Wednesdays. This is the best place to be here at Bible Help Desk. Ruben, thank you once again for joining us this morning on Wake Up With Hope. Absolutely. It's been my pleasure, Ronnie. And thank you also for tuning in to Wake Up With Hope. Your support is crucial. We need you more than ever so that Bible Help Desk can continue to be produced. Calling your donation today at 
1-888-446-7388. Again, that's 1-888-446-7388. Or donate online at hopetv.org slash donate. Again, that's hopetv.org slash donate. Thanks for your support. Thank you, Ronnie. We have to take a short break now, but stay with us. When we return, Pastor Mark Finley will share today's devotional thought. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Wake Up With Hope, friends. Thank you for being here with us. It's now time for our devotional thought. Pastor Mark Finley will be sharing with us this morning. The book of Proverbs is not some theoretical book to place on our shelf and pull off occasionally to debate about. The book of Proverbs presents practical principles for a living. Our proverb for today is in Proverbs chapter 19. Verse 21 says, There are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the Lord's counsel will stand. In other words, often we have plans and make plans for ourselves. But if we'd spend a moment trusting God, He will give us guidance and direction. In verse 27, it says, Cease listening to instruction. That's the instruction of God's Word, the guidance of the Holy Spirit, the wise counsel of others. Cease listening to instruction, my son, and you'll stray from the words of knowledge. In other words, God longs to give us guidance. Now, there are four principles, four essential principles of guidance in Scripture. Now, for, have you ever wondered, with the bewildering array of voices in our world, how you can ever receive guidance from God? There are four principles of guidance. First, God guides us through the impressions of His Holy Spirit. There are times that we will pray and God impresses us through His Spirit what we ought to do. The Bible says in James chapter 1, verse 5, If any man or woman lacks wisdom, let him ask of God that gives to all men liberally. So God impresses our hearts. Now, what's the difference between a divine impression and a fleeting emotion? A fleeting emotion often comes very quickly and it's gone. A divine impression is a growing constant awareness that God wants us to do something. So impressions can be very um, definite. They're very certain and they last. Emotions are fleeting. Now, the, most, the more important the decision you have to make, the more it's important to take time to make that decision. I don't have to take much time to decide what kind of tie I'm going to wear today or what kind of shirt I'm going to wear. But if my decision is on marriage, if my decision is on a life vocation, if my decision is on moving my home and my whole family from one part of the country to the other, that decision is made over time as we seek God in prayer and listen for the impressions of His Spirit upon our heart, the deep convictions. But that's not sufficient enough because at times we may confuse our human ideas for God's plan. Isn't that what Proverbs is saying here in Proverbs chapter 19, verse 21? There are many plans in a man's heart. In other words, I might have an impression to do something. It may be my own plan. Nevertheless, the Lord's counsel will stand. So how does God guide us? He does guide us through the impressions of His Holy Spirit. But God also guides us through the instruction of His Word. So I want to be sensitive to the Word of God. I want to ask God, is there anything in your Word that will give me guidance here? John 17, verse 17 says, Sanctify them through Thy Word. Thy Word is truth. So is there something in the truth of God's Word that will guide me in this decision that I'm going to make? Two young people come to me and they want to be married. One of the young persons is the young man is a committed Christian. Maybe the young woman is not. What counsel do I give them? Well, certainly I give them the counsel to wait. I offer them the opportunity to study the Word of God with them. But I remind them as well that, as the book of Amos says, can two walk together except they be agreed? And so I help them to understand the wisdom that comes from God, that He wants to guide them, but He wants them in His Word to be agreed because if they're not agreed, 
spiritually or religiously, they will have, have constant conflict. Thirdly, God guides us through the providences or circumstances of life. There's a lot of time that God opens a door and we know this is the time to move through it. Other times he shuts the door. So how does God guide us? Through prayer, the impressions of his spirit. How does God guide us? He guides us through his word. He guides us thirdly through providences of life. And lastly, God guides us through the counsel or instruction of others. I have seen this in my own life specifically. I was not brought up in a Seventh-day Adventist home. But as I grew older, I was 17 years old, my father was a Protestant, my mother was a Catholic growing up, and uh, when I was 17 years old, Dad had become a Seventh-day Adventist about four years before. And uh, I was struggling with a lot of decisions. I loved sports, played basketball on the city league teams, both for the YMCA and our city leagues, and there was one occasion where we formed a team from the city that was to play in the regional championships. Now to play in those regional championships was what was called an elimination tournament. It meant that you went uh, to the tournament on a Wednesday, practiced on Thursday morning, you played your first game Thursday night. Then you played another game on Friday or Friday night, then semifinals on Sabbath, and Saturday and finals on a Saturday night. I couldn't wait to go. I was so excited about going to that tournament. And, uh, you know, I had never traveled much before. We didn't come from a family that had a lot, so I, I, I didn't travel. And I thought staying in a hotel, you know, I was 17 years old. I was a senior in high school. And uh, I said, my, and to eat in restaurants and to travel, to stay in hotel, I'll probably never travel any place in my life if I turn this down. And I was just excited about going. I had just begun studying the Bible with my father and with other Seventh-day Adventists, had been to some evangelistic meetings, and I had accepted the Sabbath. But I rationalized in my mind. I said, you know, well, I will go, but if we don't win on Thursday, I'm going to come home anyway, and if we don't win on Friday, I'll come home. But all of a sudden, it was nagging at me, you know, nagging at me that, that I was compromising in some way because I knew that if we won those earlier games that the pressure would be on and I have to stay. I will never forget that day. You know, there are some things that are just indelibly impressed upon your mind. Uh, I went to the Norwich Free Academy, which was one of the larger high schools. We had 3,200 students in our high school. There were 500 in my class, 500 kids in my class. And I was coming down the hallway and we had pay phones in the hallway and I, I thought, I. Uh, I was troubled about this. Should I go? Should I not go? I was looking for the guidance of God. And I remembered an old lady in our church, very godly, very godly, Francis Parisi. And I went and I called Francis. I said, Francis, I'm really struggling with this decision. Can you help me? I'm supposed to go and play basketball with my team. And we go on a Thursday, but I don't play on Sabbath. And we go on Friday. But then if we win those two games, we'll be playing on Sabbath. And I'll never forget Frances' words. She simply said to me, Mark, what would Jesus do? Who do you really want to please in your life? Your team or Jesus? Thank you, Frances. I knew what my decision was going to be. I knew that I had to please Jesus. And I told my team that I was not going to go. And you know, I've sensed that God leads you to the right people to get instruction from. Find some wise, godly counselors in your life. Not people that'll tell you what you want to hear, but people that'll share with you the truth of God, and you will be a blessed man, a blessed woman. Amen, Pastor Mark. Praise God for his love. And friends, thank you for watching Wake Up With Hope. If you'd like to learn more about our program, maybe re-watch a segment during the weekend or share us with a friend, please visit hopetv.org slash wake up. And we look forward to starting the week with you, so don't forget to join us on Monday as we kick off our week with the hope of Jesus. We'll have an inspiring message from Voice of Prophecy and special features just for you. Also, if you enjoyed today's devotional thought and you would like to learn more about the Bible, visit hope.study to receive your free Bible study guides. Again, friends, that's hope.study. 
And friends, we can leave without sharing the a Bible, Bible promise. promise for the weekend. <laughs> you know, today's Bible promise comes from Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6. It says, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. Did you get that? He will never leave you nor forsake you. Stay with him, friends. Amen. We wish you a joyful weekend as you stay strong in our Lord. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, Lord, there may be circumstances in our life that cause us to be terrified, cause us to be anxious or very worried. But today, Lord, we choose to make a choice to put our trust in you and you alone. Lord, fill us with the Holy Spirit. We need strength, we need courage, we need hope. And we pray, Lord, that today you would remind us time and time again of all the wonderful truths that we heard today through music, through devotionals, through inspiration. Lord, may this carry us through this day. And we thank you, Lord, for answering our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen.